Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Today we have U.S. Open champion Aaron Ratliff on. Aaron, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. So you just played two days ago in the U.S. Open finals. You won. Uh, you are the 2023 U.S. Open champion with Gabby Dabrowski. How does that sound? Has it sunk in yet? What have the last 48 hours kind of been like? Um, no, people keep telling me that, like saying that, and I'm just, you don't a little... believe them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think eventually, you know, I'm taking a few days to rest and try and recover, but, um, mm. yeah, I'm sure it'll sink in soon. I'm still like a little bit like, whoa, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, is there, so you and Gabby teamed up in, uh, Montreal at the Canadian open for the first time. Um, and y'all, y'all went around there. Y'all went around in Cincinnati, made the semis in Cleveland, had some good wins. I think all three of your losses there were in third set, um, which is the, the 10 point tie break, right. I believe. So y'all had played decent. It seemed like, but was there anything at the U S open that you felt like clicked a little bit more so? Um, than some of those previous tournaments or was it just a matter of just getting more matches in together um, talk about that a little bit yeah I think it was a combination of everything we had um, obviously a lot of the times this the, these kinds of things take time so every week we were kind of like okay like we're working towards you know building something together um, mm -hmm. and nothing's going to come really quickly so that was a, one of our big things was focusing on the process rather than like trying to get the wins right away which is slightly ironic because then obviously we like won the U S open. So, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know really what clicked in at U S open specifically. I think I've said it a lot. Um, but we're really honest with each other, really open. We're, um, upfront, you know, we, if I have a problem with something, I'll tell Gabby and vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. like if there's something or if there's something I'm needing on the court, then I'll mm -hmm. like immediately tell her, um, even if it's in like a time of really high emotion. So I think, mm -hmm. we, and also we, we, what I've, another thing that I've said, which I think is true is we went through a lot of, um, emotional matches together. Um, yeah, like our quarterfinal obviously was a big one, um, mm -hmm like Louis Armstrong was full and there was like 20 people cheering for us. Yeah. <laughs> it was really tough. Um, yeah. I mean, it happens at sports, totally normal. I'm like so grateful that the stadium was full, you know, cause it was, yeah. such, it was a lot of energy, a lot it was of a crazy atmosphere. Yeah. Absolutely wild. So, you know, <laughs> even going through that, um, you know, when you go through stuff like that, you become stronger together. So maybe mm -hmm. that has something to do with it. Um, and we had yeah. a lot of tough, you know, three setters in the first few rounds as well. We didn't get through a match in two sets until I think semis. I don't yeah. know if that's true. But yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Cause you had a walk over in the round of 16 and then, yeah. yeah, the first two rounds were three setters as well. So. Yeah. So our first three matches were three sets. So that's like, you know, not yeah. absolutely not easy and you got to go through a lot of stuff. You said um, y'all are really honest with each other and you'll tell her if you need something on the court. Do you have, an example of that that's, that's something that I've heard from players more and more over the last couple of years um and yeah. I feel like a lot of players listening who, who play just club level tennis maybe maybe they do need something from their partner on the court but they're afraid to ask what, what's an right. example of that um from like a tactic perspective I would say like um Oh, what's I'm trying to think of an example that I I that I would have or maybe one from the US Open that you can like, share. Yeah. Um, like if you for tactics, like if you don't want to do a lot of people don't want to do like eye formation on their second serve ever. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? They'll do it on their first serve all the time, but then they don't want to do eye on their second. Yeah. But then like if you're playing with someone that's a new partner and you miss your first serve and they like stay in the eye position. You're yeah. almost like afraid to be like, no, like go back to regular. Yeah. Um, so that's an example. Um, and then like just like the way it's almost just like the way that we support each other. Um mm -hmm. 
you know, if someone told me to relax, I would freak out. Like, that's just <laughs> like, I'm, I would love to be able to relax and just like be super chill, but like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, stuff like that, that I think, um, yeah. Yeah. That, I don't know. That's an example, I think. Because no, no, no. That makes sense. Like, oh, out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, relax, blah, blah, blah. But I actually think that's just a rule in general is never tell a woman to relax, but also on the <laughs> tennis court. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I, I like the eye formation point a lot because it's something. I think with formation and location, right? Like a, a lot of times when I'm serving, especially if it's a pressure moment, you know, in the deuce court, for example, I, I like my wide one a little bit better. It's just more consistent, right? So if it's a pressure moment, I really want to make a first serve and my partner will call T. And sometimes depending on the partner, I might feel weird about calling them off of something, but I've gotten right. better at you know, saying, look, I need the wide serve right now because I need to make a first serve and I'm nervous yeah. and that's the one I'm comfortable with. So we're doing that. So I think yeah, that happens the a lot in, um, that happens a lot, that happened a lot with us. Um, mm -hmm. specifically in, I think the semi, I was having just not a great serving day. I just wasn't, there was something that was, my time was off. It just wasn't happening for me. So the serves that normally sure. I can hit I can kind of hit all the serves, I think. Like I have some favorites, but I can, I'm good um, if my partner like tells me what serve to hit and I'll just be like, okay, mm -hmm. we have a plan. But that day specifically, I couldn't, I couldn't find the wide serve. And that was the mm -hmm. work, the serve that I think was getting um, Gabby more volley. So that mm -hmm. was like a time where I was like, hey, like I know that the wide serve is what we're wanting to do, but I just can't hit it. So we're going to have yeah. to work on it and do it slowly until I can get to it. And yeah. eventually at the end, I actually did, I was able to hit it. And I think if we had, you know, if we hadn't had that dialogue, um, I don't think I would have been able to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're trying to hit a serve you can't hit. You end up giving them a lot of second serve looks, which you don't want yeah. to do. So, um, okay. So I want to talk about some of the specific matches. So we, you mentioned the, the quarterfinal. Um, so I was there uh, on the baseline Oh really? Uh, in, oh, in the, yeah, I was there on the baseline watching uh, in the first row there, and the atmosphere was just wild. It was electric. Um, so y'all get to a third set. Um, you're up. I think you were up four one and had a point or two to go up five one in the third set. Double and then break. Obviously, the crowd's going crazy for for Townsend um, being the the only American player on the court. And you'll lose that. It gets to 4-2, then it's 4-3. And I think at one point, you walked over to the chair and you asked the chair, hey, can you have the crowd or ask the crowd to be quiet between my first and second serve? Because they were actually cheering after you missed a first serve. Or maybe yeah. it was Gabby missing a first serve. I'm not sure. Um, which is a reasonable request. But, you know, it's tough because it's New York and the fans are so crazy. Um, and honestly, it, at that point, I thought, um, to be honest, I thought y'all were rattled and I was like, this is not looking good for them. Um, uh -huh. and y'all tur turned it around though. Like you brought your energy back up. I could see your body language come back up at the end of that third set. Talk about what was happening for you, what you, you were telling Gabby, what she was telling you, the communication with the coaching box. How did y'all kind of manage the emotions and, and get through that? Yeah, I think it was, um, whew, it was definitely the hardest, well, now, I mean, maybe the final, one of the hardest matches I've ever had to play, like with the ups and the downs and the roller coaster of emotions and just all the outside things that were um, yeah. causing stuff happening, you know, that wasn't just tennis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I definitely, I asked, yeah, because I think it was me serving and it was a couple times where I missed a first serve and it was like full cheering. And I was yeah. like, that's, that's not right. Not... <laughs> yeah, I think that obviously I'm all for, you know, I'm all for energy. Having it electric is amazing, especially watching doubles, you know, like we love that. Yeah. Um, but you, if, if you know anything about tennis etiquette, yeah. you're not cheering in between first and second serve. So that was annoying. Yeah. And obviously I'm out there emotional and, you know. Yeah, Whatever. no, it's a reasonable request. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, how did we get through that? Were we telling each other? I would say, 
we kept trying to be like, well, the other thing that was really hard was we couldn't really hear our box. Like it was mm. so loud that we had to walk over to them and literally stand right beside them at the towel. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes the ref was like, hey, you can't talk to them. And it was like, we're literally not saying anything. We're just trying to listen. We're just trying to hear what they're saying, you know, because obviously we mm -hmm. can't have conversations. Um, so that was really tough. They were just trying to tell us like, you know, enjoy the atmosphere that we're in and enjoy like the experience, which is mm. kind of funny because like, obviously we did because, I mean, I think I would have come, if we had lost that match, obviously it would have been heartbreaking, but I would have come, we would have come off it and still learned a lot. And I think the coolest thing about that match is we, we were, we were able to win, but also learn at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, which was crazy. I th I don't know. I can't. I don't know if I can remember what we were telling each other. I think it was just like, hey, like let's focus on the process because at four one when Gabby was serving, we had a really rough service game. Um, mm -hmm. to get like some together, like she didn't serve great, I didn't volley great. I was like not poaching. That's like the first thing to go for me if I'm like nervous. You know, I'm just like stopping. I stop kind of moving a little bit. I think mm -hmm. a lot of women are like that, but um. Yeah, I think we were just trying to focus on like the process and each specific point, like a, a play that was working and trying to listen to our box and ask them like, hey, what's working? Because it's hard to figure it out when you're like that emotional. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any advice for, so, so a lot of the people listening are club players who play a lot of 10 point tiebreakers. In that match, y'all won in a 10 pointer. I think y'all were down 7-2 and came back and won 10-8. Um, yeah. What advice do you have for people who have to play 10 point tiebreakers a lot? It's a question I get a lot. Um, how do yeah. I win more 10 point tiebreakers? How do I not get nervous? Is there, are there any routines or tips or things that you use in 10 pointers? Um, not really. I think I used to just, you know, like you said, get really nervous for 10 point tiebreakers. Cause it kind of felt like it was a coin toss. Like, didn't have mm -hmm. to do as much with like the best tennis player at the end of the day. It was like, wait, if someone plays well for like three and a half minutes, they're going to yeah. win. Which is yeah. frustrating. Uh, but now I've just kind of learned to embrace it and be like, Hey, like now is my time to be the one that plays the best for three and a half minutes. And I think the bolder you are in those 10 pointers, the more success you will have. Um, mm. Whether that's immediately, like if you're bold and you get burned like down the line or something like that, or I think it's building something like for the future. So I think it doesn't matter what level of tennis you're playing. If you're bold in those big moments, it'll pay off eventually. So I think that's okay. my mind. Yeah. I like that. What What's, what's an example of being bold early? I think probably just um, doing something that's uncomfortable to, to you. So yeah. I think like if you're, because a lot of the times in those big moments, it's like, oh, you go with what's comfortable, you know, like if your favorite serve is mm -hmm. the tea, you'll go tea, even if maybe that's not the right serve for the opponent that you're playing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times, like, you know, being comfortable, getting uncomfortable is what's going to make yeah. you be a better player. Um, I'm trying to think of an example for, for us, it would probably be like, I remember there was a big point in that, um, 10 point where I think maybe we went I was serving and we went like wide and Gabby goes which like a lot of the time across your body like if you serve to someone's forehand and they hit across their body that's like the natural swing pass so mm -hmm. I'd say a lot of the time if you don't go too wide they will go cross court so your partner will get a volley mm -hmm. um, depending on their stroke but yeah that's probably a little uncomfortable for yeah. me you know for us to do that together but it worked in a big moment so. Yeah, because if they hit that late, they're hitting it down the line, yeah. potentially for a winner, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I like that advice of being bold earlier in the tiebreaker because if you if you call that poach or or whatever it is early in the tiebreaker, it's just one point, and if you lose that point later on in the tiebreaker, you might be in the same scenario, and that returner's thinking, well, they poached earlier in the tiebreaker, I'm gonna have mm -hmm. to go down the line again, and maybe they miss that return, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so I think doing it early is, is, is really good advice. Uh, so in the semis, y'all played Shea Su Wei. Uh, she, at the time, was 16-0 and 0 in Grand Slams this year uh, in women's doubles anyways. Uh, and y'all gave her her first loss uh, since she was the Roland Garros in Wimbledon champion. 
Yeah. What makes her so good and how did you beat her? First of all, that's an unbelievable statistic. Um, <laughs> and for her to be like, she was, she was all out. for like a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's she incredible. comes back and casually wins two slams and then makes yeah. semis of the third one. It's pretty crazy. She's yeah. absolutely incredible. Um, what makes her so good? You can't tell where she's going to hit the ball. It's really mm. hard. She holds it till the last minute. Um, she's very crafty. You know, her lobs, her like dips. You mm-hmm. kind of don't know for a team if someone's coming to the net, you know, you don't know if you're going to get a lob or really low. And so that's really hard because you on your you're like on your toes keeps you on your toes mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. um I don't know how we beat her I, I <laughs> no I mean I do know I believe that we could win that match but I uh yeah she's it, they're a really good combo because they're giving you completely different things Wang is hitting hard and flat from the baseline yeah you know hard serve all that stuff and then say is um giving you all the crafty stuff. So you kind of, no matter who you're hitting it to, you're getting something different. Yeah. Um, I think our plan was to just come to the net and get to the net and kind of like try to fluster them together. So yeah. I think that was one of our main goal for that match. Yeah. Which... Worked out. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. And then you've got the finals. You play uh, Siegman and Zvonareva who, have been there before they won it in uh they won the u.s open in 2020 um before you even get to the match how did you sleep the night before (laughs) (laughs) or did you (laughs) yeah i'm actually a really good sleeper like i can be you know Uh for anything but it's funny i'm not normally nervous until the day of like i don't think about the match that i'm going to be playing like if we had two well i don't know if we had one or i think one day off but I was like, I'm pretty good about just, you know, doing my practice, doing my treatment, going back, you know, hanging out with friends, family, whoever, and then winding down. I don't, yeah. um, I don't have trouble sleeping before. What I have had trouble doing is sleeping after. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I'm okay. like, the is still going. Like, I'm like, so amped and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I would just like a nice, like eight hour night of sleep. Okay. So you haven't slept since Sunday then? <laughs> almost it feels like that <laughs> <laughs> um so how did you feel going into it you, you got nervous I guess the day of and h- how did you deal with that and, and talk about the match a little bit yeah I'm always nervous I think I always say you know my coaches know everyone knows if I'm not nervous something's wrong because that means I'm mm-hmm. not caring I'm not invested um obviously first final of a grand slam is a little bit different um yeah how do I, how did I manage it? I just, you know, tried to do the exact same things that I was doing for all the other matches and just kind of, um, embrace it. Like that's literally mm-hmm. what I've worked my entire life for is to be in that position and to play on Ash in a grand slam final. Um, mm-hmm. I just had to remember that, you know, that that's why literally why I play tennis and, mm-hmm. um, just try to embrace every moment. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything specific. Like I did my whole thing, you know, I, I ate the same breakfast. I got coffee at the same time. I, you know, grip mm-hmm. my rackets, listen to Taylor Swift, like all the same okay. stuff. <laughs> Maybe that's the key. <laughs> yeah, 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 that probably is the key. She gets me through everything. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what about uh, warm up before the match? So you and Gabby went out there. Did, did y'all have like 30, 45 minute warm up? Yeah, we had 30 minutes on Ash. We, um, okay. We played at one and we did it 11 to 11.30. Okay. And y'all didn't change anything for your warm up, just normal? Yeah, no, we did everything the same. Okay. Besides the it, fact that it was on Ash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So it sounds like for, for people who, who get nervous a lot, just stick to your routines. Um do everything the same as if it were a normal match, even if it is a a lot bigger match. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my advice would be. I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, it is, it is a game. I've obviously it's my job and I'm playing a game, which I'm Mm -hmm. so as my job, which I'm so grateful for, but, um, I just kept, I just kept trying to think like, Hey, like if you had told like little Aaron that this was happening, she would just be so happy. 
So I, yeah. I just tried to think about that the entire time. I like that. That's a good way to frame it. Um, yeah. What, one thing I think about sometimes is uh, for you, it's different because you're playing in the U.S. Open. For for us, we're playing in adult tennis leagues. Um, yeah. So for us, one thing I like to think about is if if I lose this match, literally no one's going to remember in three months. Um, <laughs> For for US Open, it's different. So it's good that y'all won. But that, that's a good way to frame it. It's like if I had told myself five, 10 years ago that I had made it this far, then I'd be so happy with myself, like regardless yeah. of the outcome of this match. I think <laughs> also another thing I like to say is um, it's like a win-win. Obviously, mm-hmm. you win. And like for the day of the finals, we want, we we would win the US Open. And if we had lost... I mean, it's still a win. Still, it's still a great two weeks. You're still yeah. doing everything, you know. As I, my biggest thing is like, I don't want to come off the court and have regrets about the way that I handled myself and the way that I, you know, played. And yeah, because that's mm-hmm. the worst feeling in the world. That's a lot worse than losing for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I know you got to run. Last couple questions. Um, plans for the rest of the year are you going to keep playing with gabby and try to make a run at the wta finals i saw y'all are up to 10th now (laughs) didn't even know that um (laughs) yeah i mean we're going to guadalajara next week so uh yeah we're set for the rest of the year and so yeah i'm sure we'll talk about next year after that yeah yeah figure it out in the off season but um yeah so Guadalajara, Tokyo, Beijing, and then not sure after that. But, you know, if we're, we're just going to try and keep doing the same things that we've been doing. And if we get to play WTA finals, we're going to be really happy. And yeah, if we don't, we don't. Yeah. Uh, so the last few questions, um, these are from some Instagram uh, fans. I put out a story this morning and a few people asked some questions. So uh, this one's kind of open-ended. How do you best support Gabby as a doubles partner? Um, I think I just try to give her um, unconditional support no matter what. I I like, you know, I said one time that one thing I really admired about her is that she's um, unapologetically herself all the time, which I think mm-hmm. everyone can learn from, you know? <clears throat> um just giving her the the space to be who she wants to be. And yeah, I think that that's, yeah. I don't know if that's like too open-ended, but that's what my answer. <laughs> no, it's an open-ended question. So it's a good answer. Um, question. Uh, next one is how hard is it to keep playing on a double salary? <laughs> so obviously you, uh, <laughs> winning the U S open helps a lot, but um <laughs> Yeah, doubles players don't get paid enough, which is something that uh, we're trying to help change. But um, answer that however you'd like. I know you don't want, probably don't want to talk too much about uh, finances. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough. I've obviously been, been ranked relatively high for the last, what, two years or something. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, you're thinking about money, but you're not thinking about that much. It's a bit different when you're playing like 15Ks, 25Ks, 60Ks. Um, yeah. If- Dominantly doubles at that level you need to have some outside support I think um yeah now it's okay now and obviously winning, winning the US Open helps <laughs> uh so last question for you non-tennis related have you hiked the Lord of the Rings trail I think somebody saw uh the New Zealand yeah. flag next to your name <laughs> yeah good you question have? um I haven't no, no? I d- I've I don't know if that's bad to say, but I've never seen Lord of the Rings. I'm not a big uh, <laughs> Wi-Fi gal. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not either. <laughs> it looks like a cool trail, though. I think. Yeah, uh, it does. I, I'm, I'm sure I'll do it one day. I mean, I spend every yeah, I December like as well. and a little bit in January in, in New Zealand. So one day I'll definitely get to it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Aaron, thank you for joining us again. Congrats on the U.S. Open. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good week and good luck the rest of the year. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Doubles Strategy Newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip 
or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're gonna get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will, I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe, and over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players, all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.